Hi everyone, my name is Joseph Koenskin. Welcome back to my art studio. What I've got on the easel today is a painting that's going to be two swans swimming through some calm water and the entire scene is gonna be covered in mist. So over the next few days, I'm gonna be painting that mist and I just wanna show you a little bit of how I do that. There's gonna be a lot of very subtle color mixing and a lot of subtle brushwork that I hope over the next few days as I continue to build the layers and build the colors and just be very soft with my brushwork that it'll bring the entire piece to life in the end. So with that, I'm gonna hop over to the easel and start painting. As you can see, I've just got um, the painting partially started here with some of the water and a little bit of that dark color in the background and a space that I've left for the mist and the swans. So I'm gonna start the mist by mixing up a gray color that's kind of tinted purple with a little bit of ultramarine blue and some alizarin crimson. And then I'll just go ahead and start blocking everything in, getting some of that nice base color down. And I just wanna do this just to kind of get a general sense and shape of where the mist is gonna be in the painting. Now it's gonna take a couple layers to build this up, but uh, once I have that, then I can start um, in on some of the darker colors that are hopefully going to give me a nice gradient, um, both into the water, the colors of the water, and into the color of that background. So here I'm just going in, adding a bit of a darker color, starting that, that nice gradient um, from this light color to a bit of a darker color that'll eventually um, blend into the the dark colors of that background and I'm just being very subtle here both in my color mixing and in my brushwork I want the colors in the mist to be as seamless as possible to give the the mist that really smooth texture and most of the way I'm gonna do that is what you see me doing here with this brush which I'll be doing a lot of dry brushing or scumbling and just really scrubbing that paint onto the board to give it that smooth texture and that smooth feel. And here I'm just slowly building up some of those textures and just getting an overall feel for where some of the mist is gonna be. Then I'll just keep going up into some of these darker colors and building a, a solid base for that gradient of color that's gonna go from light to dark. And at this point, it does look fairly blocky with some very harsh lines between the colors, but I'm gonna go back in there shortly after this and start smoothing out some of those gradients and just adding uh, the colors that would be in, in between those two and just slowly fading them up into each color. And as you can see here, it, it only takes a very small amount of paint to either lighten or darken a color. Um, for the the mid-range values of these colors and so once I have that I like to test the color in between those two layers just to see if it's the the right one that I have and then I go about trying to dry brush in that that area where I want that gradient to be nice and smooth and the way I start doing that is I have this rounded brush and I keep it virtually dry with, with very little moisture. And I dab just the tiniest amount of paint on there and oftentimes dabbing it off just to make sure there's not too much paint on there. And then I just start going in and kind of start scrubbing the, the paint fairly firmly onto there. And this helps create that smooth gradient and it, it helps blend the two different colors together by building structure and by very lightly putting paint on. Now this is a fairly lengthy process and I could do this wet on wet, but doing it dry like this helps me control some of the structures in the mist. And because it's such a large painting, I'm going to want to layer everything and draw out some of those filaments and some of those structures that eventually will be part of the mist in the entire painting. And I find it to be a bit of an easier process to do it dry like this, where I'm scrubbing the paint on very dry and just slowly building up those textures. So 
So I'll just continue on mixing those colors very subtly, adding either tiny amounts of black or tiny amounts of white to darken or lighten, and then just scrubbing that paint on, as you can see here. And then what I can start doing at this point is I can start picking out little structures in the mist and, and grabbing some slightly lighter paint and just drawing out some of those structures and just kind of building some of those those pieces in the mist that, that I want to bring attention to. It's important for me to keep things loose and keep things random. I don't want to find myself getting into making a pattern in the mist where I have the same structures over and over again. So trying to keep it random and trying to keep the, the mist as light as possible to, to have that feel where the mist is rising off the lake and the wind is slowly carrying it across as these swans are swimming through. And so slowly building it up like this with just very minimal layers of paint helps give me a lot of control over those structures. And because acrylic paint dries very quickly, this works in my favor where I can go over layer after layer without waiting for it to dry. So once I have that mostly established, I'm gonna come in here and I just wanna add a bit of a lighter area where I think some of the light is gonna be coming through. Uh, the swans, once they're painted, are gonna have a very strong direction of light. So I just wanna emphasize some of these areas where the swans are by just adding some lighter and lighter colors into these little pieces of mist that are both in the foreground and just on the plane where the swans are swimming. And this takes a little bit of time, just slowly building it up, but you can see I'm just adding just a little bit of a lighter color and then I'll add lighter colors still, just to build it up and emphasize that nice strong direction of light. And what I want here, um, with emphasizing this direction of light is that it's gonna help the light on the swans and it's also gonna help build a little bit of depth in the mist rather than it just being one flat color in the background, this light layer and some of the lighter parts that are just on the water by the reflections are gonna really help build some depth within the piece. All right, this is a great place to leave it for now. I think the mist looks great. I'm gonna come back after the swans are painted to see if I can add anything else to it. Okay, so now that I have the swans painted and I have a really nice, strong direction of light from the swans painted, I wanna emphasize this area here. It doesn't feel strong enough just yet. So I wanna bring in some lighter colors and just emphasize it like there's a beam of light or, or a break in the trees on, on a shoreline where the light is just coming through. So I'm just grabbing a little bit more lighter colors and just emphasizing that there. And this is why I like this drying brushing technique for doing the mist is that I can just go over top of these layers and just really subtly lighten those areas while at the same time keeping it really, really soft. And if I need to go back and continue to emphasize, I can do that. And then just to kind of set the swans back in and just kind of do that, I'm going over the reflections a tiny bit. This really helps just push it back and give it that nice, light, airy sort of feel. So just a few final touches and just a few sort of emphasizing of, of that mist and making sure that everything's just in the right place continuing to dry brush over everything and and I think with that I have a finished painting. I'm really happy with the way this painting turned out and I hope you enjoyed following along as I shared some of my process and a little bit of my techniques about how I build up the mist in these paintings. Thank you so much for watching.